So this is unit H. Unit H is perhaps the hardest unit simply because it has the most number of pieces. So we are going to take it out and line it all up and get it ready to sew. Okay. So we're just going to separate all the pieces. Again, if they're wrinkled, I would run them under the a hot iron just for a second. So right now I'm just getting them into relative order. I'm really not looking at them being going the right direction yet. Just want to get them all separated and make yourself enough room on your board, all that kind of stuff. Okay, and then the best way to really do all of these is to make sure you refer back to those directions over and over again. They're really a great guide to get this guy put together correctly. So H, 17, goes this way. Okay. So I always like try to make it match my paper, even if that put, means I put my paper on the board in a weird way. So H1. Just gonna set him here. H2 goes this way. Okay. So you're gonna check and make sure you're correct. So H2 has a double slit right here. The fat end is at the H17 end. And that means H1 should have a double slit here if you did it right. And he does. So that is a double slit. There's one and two. So that's how you line it up. Most often if people have a problem with H, it is because they flipped one of these blue ones the wrong direction. So everyone's pretty good about lining these guys up correctly because they have an obvious fat and skinny end. These ends on the odd numbered ones are not nearly as easy to tell apart. So this is a two, this is a one. So that means this guy goes, find the one. It's on this end. It's right there. So that's the one. He goes right there. They line up like that. And you find the four. So this one has a two on this side. So that means I need the two on this side. There's my two. He goes right there. That means this one has a one. So and my natural inclination was to put that one there, but that is a two. So it's upside down. It goes that way. This one is a six. So there's the two, matches the two, that's a one, and you keep going. The, tick, the trick about this one is it changes direction. So as you build it, when you look at it, at one point these get smaller and then they get bigger going the opposite direction. So as long as you follow the rules and line up all of your tick marks or your registration marks, you'll be fine. Okay. So the one goes to the one. Two goes to the two. So this one again has two slits. So he goes there. Means that side has the one slit. This one has the one slit. So it goes that way. So now I'm looking for the two. And here's the two. He goes right there. Now I'm looking for the one. Are you looking for the one? Yes, I'm looking for the one. So check yourself. It's easy to get off track on this, um, and it's it's they won't fit together if you don't line the right ones up in the right direction. They are so precision cut that you you can't make them fit. So unlike traditional quilting where we can ease and stretch and make things fit, sometimes these are cut in such a way that you really can't do that. Okay, so these are all laid out and almost ready to sew. Now we're going to make your alternate size, alternate size H's and flip everything the right way. So if you have any questions about that, make sure you refer back to your instructions. They're really well thought out and well diagrammed to make sure you do it right. So you're going to have H's and H reverses. For now, we're going to assume you've done that and we're going to show you how to sew these together. So we're going to take H1 and H2. Okay, we're going to line up those, these have the double slit, these have the double slit. We're going to line those up together, 
flip them over, expose the double slit to make sure you've lined them up exactly correct and mine aren't quite right. There they are so that when I pull on them, it makes two little hole sets. One here and one there. I'm going to put that pin right there to hold that together, hold that registration. I'm going to go get this guy right here at this end. And I'm going to get this guy right here. Okay, and then I'm going to sew. Now we talked a little bit about earlier about always adding, or generally always adding, the new piece on the top and the sectioned piece, i.e. the already assembled components on the bottom. This is the one unit where you break that rule. So when you sew this, I want you to always sew it So when you come back to put H3 on, you take it from your pile and bring it down. We talked earlier about this would be on the bottom and you, that would mean you were sewing from this direction. But for this unit, we always want to start at this top. So you're going to start up here and sew this way, which means this big bad boy is going to be on the top, which is a bit awkward. It's not hard. It's just a little bit awkward, and it's counterintuitive to everything we've done so far, and it's counterintuitive to what we do in traditional quilting. So the process works the same. Match up the slits, flip it over. Make sure they're all lined up when you did your flip. And now we're going to sew from this end to this end. What happens over time is this top piece gets bigger and bigger. At some point it's going to have 15 pieces and the piece that you're adding is going to be the lone little skinny piece at the bottom. So keep going. It's weird, um, but it ensures that when you sew that you get a straight line to attach H17 to. So you're just going to keep going. And as long as you sewed, see how you get a nice, you get this nice straight line. And if you have a wonky edge, he ends up down here. That straight line that's exactly at a quarter inch will ensure that this H17 piece fits perfectly. Okay, so it is all, all this information is included in your instructions. So there are some key places I want you to make sure that you read before you really get started. So in the very beginning of instructions, um, the first page she talks about pinning. She talks about whether or not you want to pin or glue. Lots of you may choose to glue. Um, I found pins to be fine and quick, um, and gluing was a little more tedious for me. But if you begin to have problems where pinning is pulling you off track, feel free to glue, and she has a great video online about that. Um, so feel free to do that. Um, it's really, it, it wasn't a great option for me, but some people will find it to be a better option. Um, I really found the pins to be super easy, so um, use whichever alternate works best for you. Um, that's my best advice. So in your packets, you have um, what we call a seam guide. Um, it's called a, well, it's called a crystal piecing guide. And I'm actually um, on the page that has H, because um, I wanted to talk about how you know that those seams go a certain way. And that information is all here in the seam guide. So. What I talked about was you have to sew from the, from the end that matches to 17. So these arrows right here tell you which way you're going to sew. And this arrow tells you which way to press. 
So the pressing is exactly as it has been before. Everything is going to the piece that is bigger. This is the one where you're sewing opposite to the way you've sewn everything else. So in this case, the section component, so in this case, which was H1 and 2, which is the bigger piece, gets sewn from the top so that you can travel down this seam right here, which is that seam right there. Okay, so now it's time. We've got H1 through H16 all sewn together, and it's time to attach 17. So on 17, you're going to find two marks. There's one here, right by this little thread that's in the way. There's one right there, and there is one down here. Okay, this one matches up to the one in six. So just turn this over. Line him up like that. And put a pin. Then we're going to slide down this way, find this one, this little registration, and there he goes right there in 14. Okay. Then we're going to go to each end. and stretch that middle guy so that he is nice and flat. So, now I'll add a couple of pins just to get him perfect. Okay. Once I've got him nice and flat, then I'm just gonna sew. Now, this is all bias. So be very gentle when you sew. You don't want to pull. And the main thing you want to do is make sure those stitches on the, or the, these seams on the bottom are facing your needle. So I put my hand underneath my finger underneath so that as they approach the needle bed I'm sure that they're turned flat so that yeah, I don't get them they don't switch direction and make a lump so so again I'm just gonna make sure that they're I've got one who wants to go the wrong way so I'm just gonna straighten him up and he still doesn't want to go so I'm gonna stop and raise my presser foot and make sure I turn him underneath and then start sewing again. Okay. We're going to take him to the ironing board, give him a little love, take out the final pin. All finished. And there's your H unit all ready to go. Don't take your stickers off. So he's all ready to go, ready for his next piece. <laughs>